Hey everybody, Memorial Day is a fantastic time of the year, but the market, not so good. Let's get right into it, and of course, this is the high point of the whole presentation. All right, the S&P, you can see here, we made a lower high late last week, and this week we spent on the defensive, but we didn't break the low we made in the middle of May. <clears throat> okay, lower high, but not a lower low, but... The momentum's pretty crappy, shall we say. Uh, Dow Jones also didn't make a lower low, but look at the selling pressure. The red line shot up this week, showing increasing uh, selling pressure. Uh, buying pressure down a little bit, but no big deal. But nonetheless, we didn't quite break the lows we made a couple of weeks ago, but oh, the NASDAQ did. So you can see right there that what's happening is, is that the market is shifting from those sexy, texy stocks over to the more defensive stocks that are in places like the Dow. But we'll show you more about that in just a second. Seasonality, you know, we broke up through there for a nanosecond and then we've been on the defensive ever since. So we're going to have to shift it back to neutral for sure. The only thing is the purple predictor remains quite bullish it's much higher and holding up much better than the actual index shows that the smart money's coming in on this thing so it may not be that bad on the downside we were expecting some type of a dip late in may you can see it right there on the chart very clearly but then a rally that goes up and makes a high in mid-july so maybe all we're doing is following the classic seasonal picture now, but in the long run, now this is a longer term indicator. This is the third time we've broken below zero on the yield curve. You can see that we're now minus five, third time through. To me, there's just no question we're going to have a significant bear market, at least a 20% bear market, and as much as a 50% bear market coming up next year, early next year. You can see the yield curve on the left hand side. Um, at the very front end of the yield curve, it's 232, and out to the 10-year, that is slightly higher than the 10-year. you got to go all the way out to 20 and 30 years before it's actually higher than short-term interest rates. So this is a very, very negative thing here. Asset allocation, once again, they're shifting out of stocks and into bonds. Once again, there's this movement to get away from risk and to get into more safe havens. A lot of this is being triggered, of course, by trade war with China, um, and that is usually the headline thing, but I also think that it's also being driven by a slower economy. The economy is still strong, but slowing, and therefore the market has to discount that it's slowing from a very fast rate. The risk decator, this is obviously very clear. The market wants uh, consumer staples. It wants utilities. It does not want consumer discretionary stocks uh, like Tiffany's or high technology or anything like that. They are running for cover. Global shares, actually a little bit stronger than, than the U.S. shares. But bonds broke out above. I've been talking about going up to the old highs that we made in late March, consolidating and then breaking through. Well, we got the breakthrough. And not only did we get the breakthrough, we got a gap above the resistance, which is even more bullish price action. You got to be long bonds. Purple predictor is also a bit bullish. Now, our bond key indicators, with the exception of gold, they're all telling us that we're going to see lower interest rates. Gold is, is actually telling us the same story, just not as strong. But lower interest rates, once again, that's going to make the yield curve go more negative unless the Fed eases monetary policy quickly. The dollar came under pressure late as interest rates in the U.S. and signs of a slowing economy uh, put the dollar under pressure. Now, gold, I'm slowly getting more bullish on gold. Our indicators are turning bullish. We had the breakout from this, it's called a wedge formation. We had that a couple of weeks ago, but it failed. And here we are back again. So what this picture is really telling us, if we even ignore the lines, is that 
we're slowly but surely running out of downside momentum. Now, if I combine this technical picture of running out of downside momentum, and I combine it with the fact that two out of three of our indicators are bullish, and the most important one is the bottom one, and it's turned very bullish, it's making me much more bullish on gold, but the technical picture hasn't yet proven that it's a bull market. So it looks like we're setting up for a bull market, but I don't want to go in until it actually is one. Crude oil came under a lot of pressure on news that the uh, uh, Saudis, uh, every the, the, the OPEC, uh, OPEC may be pumping more oil. Everybody's going to be pumping more oil. Um, and that's really cracking the oil market. I think we're going to see oil. And then on top of that, a slowing global demand is also going to is weighing on 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 this as well. Technically, we made a lower low. You got to be short crude oil now. I mean, that's the bottom line. Bad fundamentals, bad technicals. You got to be short. Bitcoin. Uh, as you know, I'm about the only person who called the drop in Bitcoin and then called the breakout. So we're long from 4,000. We made 100% on our money here. Um, the market's consolidating. We have a kind of a mixed picture here. A couple things. The purple predictor was one of the reasons why I got very bullish on Bitcoin and bought it when it broke the 55-day high a, a couple of months ago. It rallied up. We got the explosion of a couple of weeks ago, and then we've been consolidating. Now, that's actually normally bullish. Notice the green lines I've, I've uh, drawn on the chart here. Flat top, rising bottom. That's called an ascending triangle formation. And, you know, that should be a bullish sign. The thing that's giving me pause, and I was very tempted to take profits this week, was the purple predictor. The purple predictor had been wildly bullish and was one of the major reasons why I got long. But now it's slightly bearish. So I think the trading strategy here is to stay long, but put a stop loss under the low we made a week and a half ago just to protect yourself. That would still give you about $3,000 profit. It's still 75% gain, but we got a shot to go make new highs. So we got to stick with it for now. All right. We, just, we finished a bunch of uh, Stock Financial Freedom System courses. We've got coming up August 3rd and 4th in Orlando, and then that'll be followed by our last master class for the year, and maybe forever, by the way, uh, coming up October 4th to 6th. You'll notice it's now three days long. We keep adding more and more material. That's coming up in October. But this coming weekend, not uh, not this weekend, Memorial Day, but the weekend after, we're going to be in Los Angeles doing our Option Success School. Um, then we've got Orlando definitely coming up in August, and we'll probably do it again in Las Vegas in September. And then the master class right now, it's a two-day, a three-day class also. Uh, we just keep adding more material, so please sign up for that. All right, and of course, our bear market class, crass, class, hello. <laughs> uh, please take a look at that. I think you're going to really enjoy it. We've got a lot of indications that we're going to have a bear market uh, down the road, and you really need to be preparing for it, learning about what causes it, uh, how to time it, how to predict it, and then what to do in a bear market. All right, that's it for me, freebies. We will talk to you later. Fully painted members, just hang on one second.